Good morning. Um, I am Pastor Laura Cavendish at St. Paul Lutheran in Asheville. We are gathered here, and um, I want you all to let them know there are other people because the camera's only on me at the moment. So say hello to who's joining us online. Hello. Yeah, because we do have some folks out there. Um, and today we even have proof because they've you know, come and gotten their communion elements and they let us know. That's a nice thing to see as we come together in community, even when we're in different locations. Now, um, in the midst of sharing details about everything, I, I, I left out yesterday that we meet at 9.30 in the morning and just a reiteration on that, we meet at 9.30 in the summertime until we get through um, Labor Day weekend. And then that first weekend after, we go back to the 1030 time. So that's a good reminder there. Um, we do share communion today. I want to remind folks about um, that the wafer is on the top and there are two little, um, little thingies there. Yeah, so the top one, pulls off your, your wafer, and it's the second one that opens the wine underneath. Um, and we found that out because I opened up and had stuff flying everywhere. So just a reminder that if you have poor vision, have someone else help you. That's why I didn't see that at all. Or if you have issues with hands. So um, someone in your pew and someone you know. And um, hand sanitizer before and after. We should have some in pews. And thank you, young man, for coming and getting some for your family. So, yeah, that's that's that. I help you through that process. So, and we all share at the same time together. All right, we um, we have two young women who are being confirmed today. That's very exciting. To have um, to have an, uh, an occasion like that able to happen at this time, they will go into our history books that way as the ones who were confirmed um, during this crisis. So, um, so that's so you are kind of historic that way as the class that finished online on Zoom and is getting confirmed um, this way, and we're live streaming. So. I am um, wanting you to know that we've added just recently a couple names to prayers, and um, that's Elaine. Um, doctors are trying to help her with her pain issues. She would like us to keep her in prayer. And then Martha, uh, Martha Hulse, who's um, at home, has, has had some, some extra issues to deal with. So we want to pray for them. Um, Marianne, I, uh, it is a, uh, anniversary week for you. So um, prayers that that marriage keep on going strong for um, 59 years. So can we just applaud for you that way? And, yeah. and um, we had birthdays. I am not seeing our birthday folk here. Um, so we're going to wish them happy birthday. Um, am I, Donna, you never had to come forward or anything. So um, she's like, go on, Pastor Laura, just go on. Oh, and Ben, you're next week. We will get you. So, all right. Um, that's it of my announcements. Do any of the rest of you have anything to share? Yes, Donna. God has richly blessed my garden this year in the reflection of zucchini and cucumber. 
cucumbers on the income table of the bed. Feel free to take some home with you. I have done that. Okay. Sharing of bounty. Anything else? <laughs> And those of you that are in tune with today, did I miss any details for us all? Um, bulletins were in back. I also want to remind you that if you have your device with you, you can pull up the mailing you got and you have your bulletin right there in the attachment. So I know people at home use that. They have helped us with that idea. So I'm thankful for that. Um, Let's go ahead then and prepare for worship. We're going to listen to our prelude. Um, we continue with our confession and forgiveness, and um, you may stand for that. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We have used your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, we're going to sit down for our hymn, and um, we're going to sing Blessed Assurance, and we're going to sing verses 1 and 3. Thank uh -huh.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generation, generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We have a hymn of praise we've been using. I think it's really an appropriate song for um, confirmation time when we, we see that lifetime of faith. And um, so, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song for the journey printed in your bulletin. Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. I'll tell everybody about you ever by you. Continue with our song. Our song today is Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9, and 15 through 22. And you can find us on page 286 of your green hymnal. We will read responsibly by whole verses. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. The Lord upholds all who fall 
and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. We're going to continue with our Alleluia verse as we prepare for the gospel reading. Mm -hmm. Holy Gospel this Sunday is from the 14th chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. And then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Praise to you, O Christ. Um, those who have been staying more at home notice, now you're noticing how much we don't stand up and sit down anymore. Um, I have for the sake of time, not put in a children's message, but we do have an activity we're going to begin with. I'm gonna go ahead and say a prayer before we get going. I, I have assistance. Dearest Lord Jesus, I ask that your spirit um, come upon all of us gathered here. We thank you that it is at work among your people. And as day to day comes and as each person is met or each task is met, you um, empower us with your spirit to be your people. I ask that um, this day might nourish us for all our journeys. Be with me as I share the message of all that you do for us as we journey. It's in your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. So as I said this morning, we're going to begin um, with an experience. And we're all going to participate um, even those of you who are gathered at home can join in. Um, 
Now, our two confirmands, I'm, I'm giving you a job right now. And it's okay. You didn't even have to rehearse for it because I know you have already rehearsed all your life for what is going to happen. Um, so they haven't practiced, um, but I'm going to lead you through. Um, I have some assistants who are going to help create our experience. And um, if you're ready, um, I, I need everybody else but our confirmants to shut their eyes. If that feels safe for you. I know for some people that is like the worst thing. But if you are someone who can't, please don't speak during this time. Okay. So Brianna and Sophie, you have to watch for something that's about to happen. Okay. It's gentle. It's harmless. Um, and you have those who are on the internet, I hope you'll be able to see this with the camera and don't shout it out so loud that they all hear it here. Okay. So all right, girls, are you ready to watch? Has everybody else got eyes shut? And okay, I'd like my assistants to go ahead with what I asked them to do. It's, it's very subtle. You guys stand up and come. Yeah, so we all can. Is it not blowing for you? I practiced. Yeah, Owen's got it. Okay. All right. Now, you guys, the rest of you, um, don't open your eyes yet. Now, Sophia and Brianna, what's going on? They're blowing bubbles. Would you like confirm that, Brianna? They're blowing bubbles. What about you, Emma? Are they blowing bubbles? Are they blowing bubbles? Okay. So um, let's open eyes, everybody else. Confirm, is that, were they right? Yes, they're right. Okay, thank you, thank you. Poor Jack, I gave you the dud bottle, I guess. <laughs> I guess, that was gracious of you to let your brother be successful <laughs> and not just grab it from him, yeah, okay. So I don't know about you kids at home, if you saw the bubbles, you know, go get your bubbles and, you know, celebrate the rest of the service with bubbles going wherever you're watching. That's kind of a fun thing to add to worship, bubbles of joy. Now, um, here's the thing about bubbles. I have a feeling that bubbles were one of the first ways that you, Brianna, and you, Sophia, that you're parents or grandparents or even aunts and uncles and um, friends, how they played with you. I bet you bubbles came out and they showed those bubbles to you and they would say bubbles, bubbles. And over time you learn to say bubbles in whatever way. Is that right? They were able to say the word bubbles. Yeah. And at, over time you figured out that it was fun to run around and pop them to do that, you figured that out. And um, you figured out how they felt on your nose and on your cheeks and on your arms. And you found out that they were light and that they would pop if they hit those things. Um, you learned to blow bubbles from the bubble wand. And as Jack demonstrated, that is a hard task. Um, <laughs> especially if you have one of those kind of things. So you learned to do that and you learned to spot them. I would bet you you started to see them in the bathtub and you would see them in the, the sink when you were doing dishes. So you kept growing in your knowledge of bubbles. So today you had no trouble when they started to blow bubbles to be able to name it and know what it was outside, um, right out. You could say it to everyone. You became bubble witnesses for this gathering. We have bubbles if she needs bubbles. <laughs> so you became bubble witnesses for this gathering. And Emma, I saw, was tuned in right away when the bubbles were going out. So we get taught right away what bubbles are. Now, God's love for us shown through Jesus Christ is awesome and complex and hard to put into words. 
many of us struggle with how we share about that. But just like learning about the bubbles, God started simple. God started simple. You were shown love and you were embraced as you were welcomed into the family of God through baptism. Um, you were shown that love and you felt it on you and in you. And I have a feeling you learned to run around just like you learned to run around and pop bubbles. You learned to run around and share that love with hugs and with your laughter. You learned and um, you learned to spot it when it was happening around you. You could see that there was love between people. And you um, went to Sunday school and you heard your teachers talk to you about um, the love that Jesus showed. You would come here for worship and you would hear people here pray about love and offer love. And so a little at a time, you started to be able to tell stories about love, whether it was stories told through your actions or through your words or being able to name that's not loving. So you were able to, to develop that way. Today, you're gonna stand in front of this crowd and online crowd, and this is not meant to make you any more nervous, Brianna, but you're gonna stand before us and you're gonna witness just like you were bubble witnesses, you're going to witness that God's love is present in this world and found in the Jesus you've come to know. And you're going to point it out to all of us once again. And in the future, there are some people who are going to find that out from you. It's not going to come from me or your parents. It's going to be you that make a difference that way. You're going to stand and say, yes, yes. God is present even in a life like ours right now. You're going to say, yes, it's worth knowing who Jesus Christ is and his story because he has shown so clearly what God's love is about. And you're going to say, yes, God is present through the spirit, and we will never be abandoned. We will never be forsaken. That is going to happen through you. And that's the journey of all of us in our life and faith. We see it in the lives of the women and the men in the Bible. The disciples of today's lesson, interesting case in point, they come to Jesus and they learn to live as Christians from him. Um, they witness Jesus take the loaves and the fish and feed the 5,000. And later they grow into a church. They're able to tell the story of that Jesus that they knew and the power that they found in him, that he was the eternal life-giving Christ that is found before time and found throughout all of history and holds the universe in his hands. So they learn to witness that and they grow into a group. And it's very interesting. And look at Acts 2 about this, where all are cared for and have what they need. These same disciples who hung out with Jesus, who feeds the 5,000. So this is the same kind of day for us here when we realize that our witness and your witness, Sophia and Brianna, your witness, you will tell people that you are followers of Jesus Christ. And you're gonna bring your own skills and your own gifts, and you're gonna to point to that experience and they will see through you the love of God in Christ Jesus. And when I think about scripture, you will be women of power like Esther, who spoke for justice for her people. You will be women like Ruth, um, who offered unending devotion to the vulnerable and alone. You will be women like Deborah, who lead with wisdom and determination. You will be women like Mary Magdalene, 
who never abandon others, never abandon Jesus, even at the darkest of times, and offered the love and forgiveness that Jesus had given her, you will also do that. You will be women like Peter's mother-in-law who offers hospitality to those who gather and need rest. And you will be women like Lydia. Lydia is very interesting. You lead your church in prayer and witness just like she did. I rejoice and I hope we all rejoice that God is shaping our church in this world with the promises of young people like you. And this is definitely a time when the future's uncertain, but our hearts are glad knowing that God builds that future through you and other young Christians like you. You're learning lessons about life and death right now that will shape you your whole life long. This is a time that is molding powerful young people. We promise at this point to stand by you as you continue to grow and learn. And if you are afraid and wondering what's next, we'll pray for you. We will listen to you. We will embrace you in your times of sorrow and in the times of joy that are yet to come. And as is said so much on the news and in TV, we will stand together. We will stand together. But we won't just say we'll stand together and expect to do it on our own. We stand together because we know God forever stands with us. We're all going to come together and trust in the hope and promise. And we've been repeating this so much lately that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, lately we are not often blessed with visions of a future. We feel so stuck in today. We thank you today for this time of blessing where we see a journey, a journey from birth and that growth and that future we see your presence in lives that are real and true. We thank you for that blessing today. And I ask that all who are gathered can be carried in that vision. You are a God who wants to join us in our sorrow or in our story. And I ask that we continue to live into your story. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are moving into our part of worship where we pray for the presence of the Spirit um, because we are joining into the activity of the Spirit right now as we move into our confirmation time. So let's sing, Come, O Come, O Quickening Spirit. And um, the verses we're going to sing, and I worry I didn't get this in the bulletin, one and two and four.
These persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. We rejoice that Brianna Helser and Sophia Seymour now desire to make public profession of their faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. Sisters in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from the word God's loving purposes for you and all creation. You have been called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? I do. I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continue with our prayers. And Amy is going to lead those for us. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. 
May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Especially we pray for Elaine, Martha, those on our prayer list, and those people we list silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear you offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give the gathering of believers at St. Paul in Asheville such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving all the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, you gather your people through the gift of baptism. We pray that Brianna and Sophia, affirming their baptism this day, may turn away from the power of sin and death and be made anew in the power of Christ, that their hearts might be spirit stirred and filled with the grace and truth, that wherever life's journey takes them, they may be kept in the faith and communion of all Christ's believers, that they may witness to your love in all that they say and do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Sophia, Brianna, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear his word, share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made all the baptized your own. We celebrate that Brianna and Sophia, baptized in the name of the triune God, belong to you. You forgave them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We continue with our laying on of hands. Um, this is an ancient rite of conferring the Holy Spirit as we are Christians together. So um, I'm going to move up here, Brianna. You're going to come up. This is a time when I will mask, and um, you're going to be close to me. So 
I encourage you to mask. No one's going to be able to see your face. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Brianna the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fulfillment of God. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Sophia the gift of the Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, strengthen her in her serving, empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, another time, we would um, share the peace of the Lord and offer them up for hugging and things like that. So what we're going to do is have some applause 
And um, my sister and mother taught me to just go hugs to you to one another or high five, you know. So whatever you'd like to do, you two are going to have to turn around to be able to see whatever they think of to offer you and congratulations. So they're going to turn around and we're going to applaud for them or whatever one of you want to do. your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit on all the baptized, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which Jesus was betrayed. Jesus took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the, the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The wine has been poured and the bread has been given. Come and receive the, the love and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. And we share um, our, our Holy Communion as one people. So I encourage you now to, to prepare, get your wafer out and and no one will take any longer than me, so. So do we have our wafer? All right. Martin Luther tells us that we take ordinary things that we have available and we add God's promise, which we have done. So even though this is a strange way to prepare or share our table, Christ is present in, with, and under. So the body of Christ given for you. And you can ready your wine. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. We are um, wanting to remember those who are sharing at our table um, at home with these elements. So we gather as one people um, across space, across time. Um, we gather with the saints. So let me give a blessing to that table. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace through life eternal. Go in peace. Let the people of God say amen. 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 All right. I have a prayer. So let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Now may God the creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Um, we're going to leave with a hymn of blessing, and um, it is based on that ancient blessing. So just go, my children, with my blessing. So that is printed in your bulletin, or you can find it at 721 in the blue hymnal. Not printed in your bulletin. Printed in the online bulletin. So, too much for me to keep straight.
go on our way, we remember our purpose. Go in Christ's peace to live and share the gospel of Jesus Christ through love and service to all. Spread out. 